And look at what Jesus Christ said in verse 29. And Jesus said unto her, For this sin, there is a sin that moved God. Ha! There is a sin that shows your real worship, that, that, that characterizes you in the house of God, ha! that characterizes you in the community you are. What is your sin? Your sin. Your sin when things are tiring. Ha! Your sin. When men and women are beating you up at them, you're saying when you look as if nobody loves you. What is your saying when you look as if you are doing right and men and women are turning upside down? What is your saying when we look as if when you're worshiping God, things are not turning around for you? Good. What is your saying? Jesus Christ said, Yes, for this saying. In other words, there was a saying that was about to stop a miracle. Hi. Am I speaking tonight? Oh, yes. Power of faith. There was a saying that was supposed to turn her destiny upside down and remain sick, and remain sick, and remain dying, and remain shootless, and remain a taboo and a football in the camp of the enemy. That is the same. Jesus Christ said, Yes, for this sin, yes, for this act, yes, for this action of yours, for this action. There is an action. There is an action. Jesus Christ is waiting to see. An action. A movement. A word for this thing. For this thing, he said. For this thing. Jesus Christ said, for this thing. Why? Because your word portrayed you. I don't want to talk my message before time. That's the word I have for you on Sunday. Hallelujah. Power of word. Thank you, Father. He said, go that way because of this thing. Because of this thing. Is somebody being blessed right now? Listen, I want the Spirit of God in you to convince you right now that there is a thing that moved God. There is a thing that revealed God. I want you to be convinced right now. Not by what you hear. Not by what, what men and women do. Not by what you see. But by what you say. There is a saying that moves God. There is a saying that speaks. There is a saying that reveals the real you. There is a saying that says to God, Your worship is counterfeit already. For this saying, I saw you really out of the bottom of your heart. Straight and fair on my, on my feet for this sin. In other words, Jesus Christ tempted her for her miracle. Am I blessing somebody tonight? Yes. Jesus Christ tempted her for her miracle. Yes, we can be tempted. The Bible says, No temptation has ever come, come to you that will overcome you. In that temptation, He has given you a sin. He has given you a sin. Hallelujah. Tell her for a miracle. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. For this sin, he said. He said, go that way. The devil is gone out of that daughter. And the Bible then even started. And when she was she was come unto her house, she found the devil gone out, and her daughter lay upon the bed. For this sin, power of faith. Listen, true faith resists every odd word contrary to your desire. True faith will resist it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. True faith must reveal some element of submission to the authority. True faith must reveal some element of authority or submission to the authority. True faith lives by the logo of God's word. He that cometh unto me, I will not in wise cast out. True faith lives by the logos of God's word. The word that comes out of God. True faith refuses to be controlled by the feelings of others' opinions. Or rather, your feelings. Thank you, Jesus. Faith endures all things, contrary to what he sees. I must wait until the church comes. 
I must control my mouth. I must control my words. I must control my action. True faith stands firm. Because he knows that God is able to raise him up. Endurance all things, all contradiction. Thank you, Father. True faith never observe the atmosphere for worship or for service. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 24, verse 20, pray that your flight will not be in winter. Because he knows that in winter time, many will be distracted because of the winter. True faith never observe the atmosphere. When it is good, I worship. When it is bad, I relax. No. Because you don't know where your flight will come. Thank you, Father. Thank you, King of Glory. Quickly turn, turn to the book of 1 Samuel, please. 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 1. from the life of Hannah and Eli, the priests. The Bible said, I'm going to read from verse 12. The Bible said, and as she continued praying before the Lord, Eli, the, the priest, noticed her mouth. Hannah was speaking in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard for Eli to hear. So early taught, he taught, ah, he taught, he taught, he taught. When, when, when have you ever considered your, your, the one God has laid over you as an authority to see you, that, oh, he made a mistake. That was not what he wanted to say. The Bible, the early taught. You know what, early made a mistake. He taught, he taught. Look at what he taught. He never thought that Anna was doing something right. He thought that Anna was doing something wrong. Listen, he thought, he thought that Anna was drunk. When, when, listen, when have you resist the word of authority because of what you see in the authority? You resist it. You say, no, I'm not going to be moved. I've seen my blessing in this house. I'm not going away. I'm not moved by the arm of all shots. By the choirs, by the children, teachers, or by the ministers, because I have seen my destiny fulfilled in this house. And like the priest taught, like a, what a foolish man! He taught, he taught, he taught, he taught that Hannah was drunk. Now look at what the Bible says in verse fourteen. So and I said unto her. How long will you be intoxicated? Put away wine from your life. The Bible said, but Hannah answered and said, no. And again and again he called Eli, my Lord. Am I speaking tonight? Oh, yes. Element of, of, of submission to authority must be seen in the power of faith. When you are empowered and being moved by faith, you must be in submission to every word that comes out. He said, no, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I was pouring out my soul before the Lord. Regard no your handmaid as a wicked woman, for out of my great complaint and bitter provocation, I have been speaking. There, there, the Bible said there. In other words, listen, for this saying, hey, Kebobo Shaka, for this saying, am I speaking to somebody tonight? For this actual, listen, I am not sweating because I want to sweat. I am speaking to somebody. I'm speaking right now. Don't be travel with your head. Thank you, Jesus. Then, and I said, for this sin, there is a sin that provokes God. There is a sin that provokes the man of God in the house. There is a sin that provokes blessing and fulfillment of dreams. The Bible said, and I said, 
Then Eli said, Go in peace. And may the Lord God of Israel grant your petition which you have asked of him. And she said, Let thy handmaid. Hannah was not speaking about to Eli. He said, Let thy handmaid find grace in the sight, in thy sight. So the woman went on her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. When you read further, you see that Ella, uh, Hannah conceived and gave birth to a baby boy, Samuel. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Your feet. I believe I have blessed somebody tonight. Because we are too big for the devil to steal, to kill, and to destroy. You cannot have apostles in the house and prophetess in the house. The hierarchies of the church. The hierarchies of the church. We are going to somewhere. Thank you, Jesus. Ella was moved by the saying of Anna. And Jesus was moved by the saying of the Syrophoenician woman. There is a saying that moved God.